it's great to see you. What have you been doing here in these last couple of months? Gorgie, it's, uh, we've been doing probably the same thing you. Nothing. What do we do? We're, <laughs> we're fortunate to be in Florida, um, in Clearwater by the beach. So that, that's been a positive. So you get a little beach, got a little tan going. I, I see got that. bad hair. My hair, I'm 6'3 now. But I uh, miss you, buddy. And, yeah, we haven't been doing much. You know, a little golf, um, a lot of beach and pool, and, and just waiting for our season to get started. I mean, you know, it's been a struggle for everybody, but, you know, we've been safe. We've been healthy. Our families have, and, and uh, that's about it, bud. Glad to hear that. That's the best news of all. And we're going to have a season, it sounds like. And you're in your seventh season as Cubs radio analyst, and you're back to the grind of every day being at the ballpark, home or away. What has that transition been like since you left us at Fox Sports North? Well, it's it's been a good one. You know, I, I miss you guys a ton, and I miss all the people there, obviously, and and I miss the Twins. You know, that's that's who everybody knew me as a player, basically, and so I miss all that. I love the idea of being accountable every day and having a schedule. I've loved that part of baseball all my life. So doing every game for the Cubs or most every game now. And, um, and that has, has been, has been welcomed. I, I enjoy going to the park, you know, in Wrigley field, there's a lot worse places to call your office than the friendly confines. I'll tell you that. And what is it like showing up though at Wrigley field every day? Because all of us up here in Minnesota have taken vacations to Chicago. We've been there as fans to work in that press box at that ballpark. It's gotta be like a walk back in time. Every time you get in there. It really is. It, you know, every day I get reminded of different things from being a player um, as a twin, you know, hitting a home run at Wrigley against the Cubs, uh, being a Cub and hitting a home run or or just walking past the concession stand where my dad and I would get a hot dog. So, I mean, you name it, from the time I was four, I've been going to Wrigley. And, you know, so every day I get a reminder of something that's really fun, you know, my buddies and, and all of us go there. So um, it's been great. Um, our team has been very good. It's a good time to be a Cub um, right now these last few years. So timing's been great, but more so than anything else, I'm mean, having a great time. You know, you know what it's like. You and I had a great time every time we were on the air, and that's what it's like every day in Chicago. Didn't feel like work. You're right about that. And in, in the template that we're looking at from Major League Baseball, there's a good chance the Twins and the Cubs could be division rivals. How cool is that, and what can we expect from the Chicago Cubs this year when we get back to baseball? To tell you about our team, our, the Cubs are a pretty, pretty seasoned group. You know, they've had a, a hiccup last year and didn't make the playoffs. But they're a seasoned group. They're a very good group. A lot of fun. But I think they're going to be a really hungry team to get back into contention and get back to, the, to what hopes to be a World Series year. And we've been watching a lot of classic games up here, a lot of Twins games from 87 and 91 and the Metrodome such a big part of those World Series runs and every broadcaster from Al Michaels to Joe Buck to Tim McCarver talked about the difficulty these players were having cracking pop-ups and fly balls you played a lot of games in the Metrodome you played a lot over there at third base what was it really like how difficult was it to field those pop flies in that stadium uh very difficult uh, the worst in all of baseball by far nothing's even close um when I first got there Tom Kelly hit me ball after ball after ball in the roof. So I, so I had a, an idea what I was doing um, in tracking the ball. There were certain things that the home players had a major advantage of understanding when the ball would be hit, even if you lost it for a second, you just would keep your eyes tracking, but it was not easy. It was very difficult. And, you know, you, you just made the best of it. The guy that designed a white roof for a ballpark, not so much. Not so good. You know, you look at hitting now in baseball, and you were always a guy that was a really good hitter in your career. T talk to me about the difference we see now in the approach at the plate. To me, as a fan and even broadcasting some of those Twins games, it looks like a completely different way to hit the baseball. Comparing the, your generation to what we see now, how different is it, Ron? Well, it's it's very different. There's a lot more to it um, nowadays. Um, you're You're taught differently. Everybody's trying to hit the ball in the air now and hit the ball up. Um, if you did that in batting practice with Tom Kelly, you'd have been kicked out of the cage. <laughs> that was me. I was kicked out of the cage right. in batting practice at times um, when I was a young player. So very different. The game is so much more specialized now, Kevin. Um, relief pitchers now come in much more regularly, and they're, the whole game is a power game now. So you're facing three and four guys coming out of the bullpen that are throwing 95-plus miles an hour. 
So the game has changed in that regard. But still, putting a good swing on the ball is still putting a good swing on the ball. And there's no computer that can teach you how to do that. You know, and Puck used to always say there's that thing about courage to stand in there on that 95 to 100 mile an hour heater. That's something else that hasn't changed. Well, stay on the subject of hitting. I'd love your opinion on your all-time favorite hitter and why that person is. Well, I, I've got a few of them. Um, I think as a kid, my, my favorite thing to watch of all time was when Dave Kingman was either with the Mets or with the Cubs. And we'd go to Wrigley Field, and we'd watch him take batting practice and hit these mammoth home runs out of Wrigley Field. And you'd go down the block chasing to try to get the ball, you know, and watch him do that. And I, you know, I was a seven, eight-year-old kid, and my dad probably ha had a to-go beer sitting out on the curb watching me run around the outfield uh, over, the, over the left field stands, you know, probably thinking I was nuts. But we used to have a great time doing that. You know, I had some great teammates, Puck, you know, as you just talked about Puck, playing with Puck. And then Paulie, you know, Molitor was a special guy to watch play. Um, for a guy that started out as a leadoff guy, he was a pretty good RBI guy and a three-hole hitter. I didn't mind hitting behind him, that's for sure. Man, just hearing your voice and, and hearing some of your baseball stories, it, it brings me back to the great times we had. It also makes me think about baseball, and I cannot wait till we're back. Great to see you, buddy. I miss you guys a ton. Hopefully, we'll be able to get back to Minnesota this year um, once uh, everybody gets through all this coronavirus and that. But miss you guys.